Hello students, this is Tarvinam Jahan and I'm here with you all people with a new chapter from history. So let's begin with the chapter Pastoral Nomads and the Movement for the class 9th from history chapter 5 and the book we are following is NCRT. Under this chapter we are going to cover the topics like Pastoral Nomads and their Movements on the plateaus, plains and deserts and the colonial rule and the pastoral life. So now let's see that what is pastorals and the nomads from where they have come, how they are found in India. These pastoralists are the cattle farmers who keep and look after the cattle like sheep, goat, buffaloes, camels, yak etc. But whereas nomads are the people who move from one place to another place to earn their livelihood. And the nomadic pastoralists in India, normally the pastoral and nomads flourish in mountains or hilly regions. These areas are covered with the grasslands and forest shrubs etc. Giving them pastures for their cattle to sustain and survive. Such areas also have more ideal climate and temperature for the cattle like sheep and goats. So in India, the nomadic pastoralist is practiced by a lot of tribes in states like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, etc. So now we will study from where they will come and from where they are going and their importance in the society like India and Africa. So let us take a few such tribes, have a look at such tribes. Now the pastoralist in the North India, that is in the mountains, the Gujar Bakharwals of Jammu and Kashmir. This is the name of pastoralist. Gujar Bakharwals. They are the pastoral nomads who move in the group called Kafilas. And their movements are generally governed by the cold and snow. In winter when the movements, uh, the mountains are covered with the snow, these Gujars move down to low hills of the Shivalik range. And on the onset of the summer, when the snow melts and the mountain becomes green, they again move back to the mountains. So if you are clear with the physical features of the India, then you will definitely understand where the Shivaliks are, where the Babas are. So you will understand this chapter. The pastoralist in the east of India, that is nothing but near the Himachal Pradesh site. So yeah, near the Himachal Pradesh, we find the Gaddi shepherds. They also spend their winter on the low Shivalik hills and the summer in Lahul and Spiti. Some of the Gujar people also stay over here in Kumaun and Garwals. They spend their summer in Bukhyal and their winter in Babar. The Bhotias, the Sherpas and the Kinnari, these are the Pastoralist name, even they move as per the seasonal changes and make best use of the pastures. Now let's see the pastoralist of the Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. So the Golas and Kurumas, these are the pastoralist of Andhra and the Kurubars of Karnataka. Under this, the Golas herd their cattle, whereas the Kurumas and Kurubars, they rear their sheep and goats. And they even sell the blankets with their woven blankets. They live near the woods. Mostly they live near the woods and during the dry period, they move to the coastal areas when the rain comes back. Now let's see the Banjaras, even these are the pastoralists, they move from one place to another. The Banjaras of UP, Punjab, Rajasthan, MP, they move to the long distance selling their plow cattle in exchange of grains and fodders. Raikas, they live in deserts of Rajasthan. So during monsoon, Raikas of Barmer, Jaisalmer and Jodhpur and Bekaner stayed in their homes. By October, grounds were exhausted. So they move out in the search of pastures and water. 
then they had to judge a how long the herd could stay in one area and know where they could find water and pasture so they move from one area to another area in search of food and water because these are the dry regions where you find a very less water and a very less green grass so to herd the cattle they have to move from one place to another place where they can find the green grasses so they have to move a very long area in in search of the water and pastures now colonial rule and pastoral life when the britishers came to india the life of the pastoralists was completely changed all the grazing land became the cultivating land forest act restricted pastoralist movement in the forest forests were marked as a protected and reserved forest by the britishers and they were not allowed to enter the reserved and the protected forest without the permission of the britishers some customary rights were also granted to the to them so whatever they have uh, the britishers have enacted the customary rights you have to pay in order to enter these lands now now the british officials were suspicious of this pastoralist why they became so suspicious regarding this pastoralist because of which the criminal tribe act was passed in 1871 they may because now the britishers have the complete control on the forest land for the trees in order to make the ships in order to make the tracks of the railways so now uh, they don't want uh, they always used to suspect this uh, pastoralist when they used to come to the forest that they may take away the wood without the permission of the britishers so always uh, they were suspicious uh, in the eyes of the britishers so for that they have passed the criminal tribal act of 1871 if any of the tribes or the pastoralists are found there you know by cutting the forest or grazing their animal then uh, the action a legal action is taken regarding this pastoralist and taxes were imposed on the cattle so to complete the life was ruined by the colonial rule the pastoralist life how easily they were moving from one place to another place by grazing their animals they were invited by the uh, other uh, village people so that uh, they are uh, uh, regaining their fertility of the soil but suddenly after the colonial rule the life of these pastoralist has completely changed the freedom has been taken away so this in this way the life of the pastoralist have been ruined by the colonial rule now these were the restrictions which were imposed by the colonial in india that is by the britishers on the indian pastoralist so here what they did first they came they occupied the pastoralist land and they said that now the forest which produces timbers like deodar and sal will be declared reserve because now they are in need of this of the great demand by the britishers about the deodar and the sal so they declared it as a reserve now this is our land and you cannot enter some customary rights were granted to the pastoralist but their mobility was restricted severely some rights were given you can come you can do some work and all uh, as a labor you can work but you cannot take away anything from the forest so some restrictions were there then the colonial official believed that this grazing whatever is done by this pastoralist they are destroying the land because of which we are not able to grow more of the deodar and sal over there or any other trees which can produce the cotton were much demanded by the britishers they were producing the cotton they were producing the tobacco so uh, these people with the pastoralists they are by the grazing of the lands uh, they are destroying the fertility of the soil and we are not able to produce there so these people they said that you people are destroying the lands so now you cannot enter so the colonial official be- believe that the grazing is uh, destroying the fertility of the soil so in this area they were not allowed to enter whichever the area was reserved and protected by the britishers they were not allowed to enter and they needed a permit to entry there they have to take the permission from the britishers in order to enter that areas and the days and timings should be uh, clearly mentioned in the register that on which day you went and how much time you have spent there in the forest everything should be specified with the department when any of the pastoralist is going inside for any work because these pastoralist were treated as laborers now these people were working for a cultivation of the cotton they were uh, 
working for the uh, cultivation of uh, these uh, whatever the products were produced by the britishers in order to import them and export them to the european countries so these the departure timing and the timing that they have spent and while coming out what all they are taking away from them so everything was checked by the department of the britishers very carefully now more restrictions what the britishers have put on this tribal people of india were these official they wanted to settle the population in the fixed place to rule over them properly they wanted these pastoralists to come into the one place because these pastoralists were in much in number they were in himalayas they were in the mountains uh, they were in the plateaus plains so now they wanted them to come into the one place so that they can uh, uh, rule them properly in a group rather than searching them where these people are there in the plains plateaus deserts and all so uh, the official wanted to settle the population in the fixed place to rule them properly then in 1877 the colonial government they have passed a tribal act which has imposed the movement of this tribal people from one place to another place and if they found the moving from one place to another place then the tribal criminal act with this they are been arrested and strict restrictions uh, and strict actions have been taken against those people those who have been arrested under the criminal tribal act and this act uh, has uh, they could not move out of their villages and without the permission first they have to take the permission in order to move from one place to another place from the britishers then the grazing tax was imposed by the britishers and even if the pastoralists those who are working over there if uh, they have been given the permission to graze their animal for the certain grass then they have to pay the tax for grazing that land for the animal so between 1850 to 1880 the right to collect a such tax was auctioned out by the contractor now how this reservation of the area protected area and the rules and regulations by the britishers the taxes that were imposed by the britishers on the pastoralist how all these things have affected the life of pastoralist the natural way of pastoral growth stopped and the cattle died due to the scarcity of fodder that is the grass the grassland and the serious shortage of the grass grazing land was available now there was a serious shortage of the grass there was no available of the grazing land so th- in this way the life of the pastoralists have been affected and the animal stock was dying because of uh, not getting the grazing land to graze now with all those restrictions they have to lead their life so how did they adjusted with the colonial rule who the pastoralist how they adjusted some reduced the cattle in their herd they started keeping the less cap uh, animals in their herds they discovered new place for their movement as the britishers restricted many places for their movement so what were the, they have uh, uh, like they could not graze their animals on, on the bank of the indus and the sindh so they moved to the haryana after harvesting the field they required manure and they uh, fulfill this needs so some richer pastoralists purchased the land and settled there if the pastoralists were rich they have uh, purchased their own land and they started grazing their animals in their own land so other pastoralists took loans and by taking the loans they became more poor because they have to pay back to the money lenders so this combined these activities with the other sources of the income also like they started working as a labor with the britishers uh then uh, they even uh, uh, by taking the loans might be they have purchased a small land on which they were grazing their animal even they were cultivating something so some source of income they started making out of it so the conclusion that how the pastoralists have adjusted with the colonial rule were yeah, the many pastoralist communities adapted the new times they changed the path of their annual movement now they started changing the movement earlier they mo- used to move from the shiva lakes to uh, this uh, many other places but now they are moving to some other places where there is no britishers uh, have not reserved the area so they have changed the annual movement they reduced the number of the cattle even in their field in their herds then they exerted the political pressure of the government for diet subsidy and other form of support so now they started asking 
the british government during that period the british government was there they started asking for a subsidiary and the support in order to have their livelihood then the environmentalists recognized that the pastoral it suits to many hilly and dry regions of the world Maasai the cattle herder in East Africa now how the life after the colonial rule of the Maasai has changed earlier the Maasai they used to live in the East Africa North Kenya and North Tanzania around 3 lakh pastoralists lived in southern Kenya and 1 lakh 50000 in Tanzania now where have the grazing land gone so in the 19th century when the european power came they were divided into groups the best grazing lands were gradually taken by the white and the masais were forced to move to the arid region where there was no less rainfall and the poor pastures and less grass so they started suffering during the white because here uh, there the colonial rule in india were the britishers here who came the europeans came in order to take all the cultivated land of the africa now what was the result the land cultivation was taken away by the europeans the masai was dominated by the whites both economically politically all the land was used for cultivation where these pastoralists were grazing their animal now these people were suffering with the pastures how to feed their pastures and the shortage of food by themselves so in this way this people the life of the african people in the european colonial rule has ruined now as it has been earlier said that the masai they used to live in the east of africa where in the north kenya and north tanzania now what this european people did they just closed the borders of the north kenya and north tanzania they were completely closed closed by imposing various restrictions on the movement of the african pastoralist they were not allowed to enter into the white areas as they were seen as a dangerous savage and in order to feed their families in the pastures now this uh, masai they have with they were completely dependent on these white people and they working as a laborers with the white people by constructing their roads and the mines so these restrictions were severely affecting the pastoral and the trading activities now how these masai were suffering traditionally what we have seen that whenever there was a dry season they used to move to the region where they can get the green grasses in order to feed their pastures in this way these people were moving from one place to another place from the arid region to the uh, moisture area where they can get the green grasses and the green plants but now what exactly happened now the nomadic uh, are suffering with the ba- uh, bad times and uh, the crisis why the masai could not shift their cattle to the places where the pastures are available due to the restrictions so the large of their cattle died due to the starvation and diseases now not all were equally affected this means that when the, uh, the masai society was divided as per the categories the elders and the warriors elders were the, in the elders group only the warriors were the youngsters in whoever were the young people in the masai group were called as warriors the elders formed the ruling group where the warriors were the younger people so these britishers they appointed the chief from out of this young people one chief that is one leader from the masai society as per the categories so from elders one chief will be there and from warriors one chief will be there and this chief appointed should only concentrate on how to increase the wealth of the britishers how are the pastoralists who were completely dependent on the livestock did not have any resource to lead their livelihood so during the period of the war and the famines they lost everything 